Namaste. Another video from my side and uh, this is a very different video uh, for it has no stories and the subject is also not life. The subject is business and that too in business a very important part of business called sales. Well, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a sales head, if you are uh, a sales executive and uh, even if you are not none of the above which I shared, if you are a person who thinks, who believes that I'm adding value to my organization, then this video is for you. After a few weeks, hopefully, uh, in the month of May, the businesses would open, the markets would open, the lockdown will end, and uh, hopefully we all should be, most of us, should be back into our businesses. And uh, before you get immersed or before you're sucked in by your business one more time, I thought I'll ask you a few questions. And uh, I want you to ask these questions to yourself. When you will be in the market in the month of May or June, whenever we go to the market, ask, are the markets going to be the same as they were pre-corona? When you will meet your customers, do you think the customers would be the same as they were two months ago? When you will interact with them, do you think the response which they will give to you would be the same the way they would have given or they had given in the past? And if I were to ask you questions like this on and on and on, I'm sure the answer for all the questions would be no. Because the market has changed, the business has changed, customers have changed, the entire way the business thought process is right now has changed in just a matter of a few weeks or a month. And I've been saying this for the last many, many years and more so the last few weeks if you were to see my videos, I've been saying it again and again and again that people who are change ready, people who are, who are more acceptable to change, they're the ones who will ride on this change. I've been always speaking about three A's of change. One, the first A is the A of anticipation. Those who are able to anticipate change are the ones who are able to handle change better. Second, acceptance of change. Those who are able to anticipate and accept the change which has happened. They are able to ride on this change. And the third, act. Those who are able to anticipate, they are able to accept change and then they are able to act on it. They are the ones who drive the markets. So I don't know which category you fall into. But all of us, whether we did anticipate, we did not anticipate, whether we did accept, we did not accept, now we need to come to the third part that we need to act on it. And if you're able to act on it, maybe, maybe I, I can say with, with some amount of surety that you will be able to ride through. If not reach the top, maybe you'll be able to sail through safely through this turbulent times. So the subject which I have for you is, is one of the most important verticals of your business, and that is sales. So if everything has changed in the last few months, this particular aspect, which is the, the, the fundamentals of business, when we say that sales is the wheels of the business, it is, it is a wheel on which the vehicle of, of business moves. So this particular aspect of business would have changed much more than any other aspect. So the way selling was done in the past in the selling and the way selling would be done now, post Karuna, will be an absolutely different ballgame. So if you were to have some handle on this as to what kind of selling, what kind of sales process, what kind of sales philosophy we need to have now, I think you will be in a better position to handle the situation when the markets open in a few weeks or a month from now. So I'll share with you in, in two, three parts this entire concept of, of sales in business post-corona. So pehle hum samajhte ki sales process kya hai and we'll just dive into it a bit, we'll not go deep uh, because the subject is vast. So I'll just give you a brief about the entire sales process, what it was uh, five, six decades ago. So five, six decades ago, sales was, was sales people were more of order takers because the supplies were tight, uh, suppliers were limited. And uh, so the customers were at the mercy of, of these suppliers and uh, they would not also have any idea, any information about the availability, about the delivery time. And uh, as a result, they would always be anxious about whether they will get their goods in time, at what price they would get it. And the flow of information was also very limited. And as a result, negotiation also was not that much possible as it is now. So in that sense, the salespeople were more of order takers. Today, the uh, sales process, sales scenario has changed. I think this is not the case uh, in, in, in many industries, except a few where it's critical. So you have to wait, you have to place the order and you have to wait. But otherwise, overall, the market has evolved. The sales process has evolved. Today, if you were to see, 
we have sales people who are who are knowledgeable who are skilled they are savvy uh, they they have awesome presentation skills uh, they they are able to uh, use technology to to give the presentations they are able to understand and and through uh, skillful uh, questioning they are able to go in deep into the customers mind and find the requirement and then connect their product and uh, the uh, uh, the features of the products with the need and they are able to to give a great uh, presentation to to the customer and and that's where i feel skilled sales people are as of now so this was the case some years back where people through their skills people through the capability their communication skills they would get the orders so from order takers to order uh, or to to people who would get orders so they they are the order getters then last 10 15 years the market further evolved the sales process process further evolved and from order takers to order getters now the sales people moved into people who got sales because of relationships not because they did not do these things they did all this but along with skills along with knowledge along with the uh, negotiation ability along with presentation they realize that they need to build wonderful relationships with uh, their clients with their prospects with their customers so uh, you would have people you know taking their customers out for for lunch for dinner for a game of golf um, they would take them out for maybe for a cricket match uh, to to see them uh, to make them see the match together and then all kinds of relationship building activities would happen so if you were to see this is how the whole thing evolved but now the market has changed further last few years along with getting orders or taking orders to getting orders to building relationship another aspect of sales evolved and this process was not known to many or was not practiced by many but post corona i say with guarantee this is the way businesses will actually get their their sales if they use this fourth evolution of sales and it is not new it is not that it, it is happening now post corona it will catch speed post corona and that's what i'm going to share with you right now but before that let me take you to the customer side of the story so we got the sales side of the story how sales evolved let me take you to the customer side of the story now the customer side of the story is that they have you know suppliers in wholesale they they and and the supply is increasing every day so there is no dearth there is no uh, pressure on them from whom to buy and uh, net is making it possible for them to to scout for to search for suppliers from anywhere in the world so now they have access to to pricing they have access to specifications uh, from suppliers across the world this is one side of the of the customer story the second side of the customer story is they are under tremendous pressure from their clients to deliver products of value and at a lower price so they too are under a lot of pressure so value has to be created and the price has to be reduced so now with this pressure on the customer side this excess of supply they have realized one thing our customers have realized one thing that they have two tools with them they they are powered by two things number one they are powered by availability over capacity and they are powered by transparency transparency means um, they know the pricing net has made them have access to pricing Of of a, of a supplier here in India, of a supplier somewhere in China, of a supplier somewhere in Europe, from a supplier somewhere outside in some other part. So they have access to the pricing, and they have access. They have availability of so many suppliers. So these two tools, you could be able to understand. They have two tools. One is transparency, and second is they have over capacity, over supply. Now, armed with these two tools, our customers would want would drive the prices down. As a result. it will lead to more uh, products being commoditized more companies going uh, through the pressure of of raise up in margins of top line taking a beating and all this blood bath will happen and post corona this will happen all the more because so many suppliers will come to the market at one go and the customers will have a choice a choice from whom to buy and they have on the fingertips the the the, the entire access to the pricing to the specifications from suppliers across the world now with this your as a sales person if you're there your ability to sell well is not enough your uh, your presentation skills are not enough your knowledge about the product side and the product and and uh, uh, your company side is not enough 
you having technology to produce uh, better innovative products is not enough. You being able to have operational excellence is not enough. You being able to uh, drive some innovation is not enough. You, you being able to build relationship with, with your clients is not enough. You having a friend in, in, the, in the customer shop is not enough. So, yes, shop cheese are big coffee nay sales dani go to fit question. I got now what else? What more? And this is where you have to put yourself into. And if you can understand what I'm going to say right now, I'm sure you'll be able to carve for yourself and for your organization over the next few months a strategy which is going to be a business changing strategy for your organization. So, listen to it all the more carefully. You've got to understand that market has. Competitors. So you have competitors in, in the market, people, uh, companies which are competing with you. So you have, you have to understand what kind of competitors I have, what kind of companies I am dealing with, and what kind of a company I am myself. So there are three kinds of people in the market, three kinds of companies in the market. One, who are level playing guys. So when, when I say level playing, who are these guys? These are the people, these are the companies who are all the time keeping an eye on the competition. And they're trying to match up. They're trying to level up with this competition. So the entire focus is, is to bridge the gap. The entire focus is to, uh, uh, you know, what someone else is providing. Can I also provide that? So if, if you're saying we will, give, we will deliver the product in a week's time, they will also come up and say, we will also deliver the product in a week's time. If they say we are, we are able to, uh, you know, uh, have a product which has a warranty for a year, they say we'll also give you a product with a warranty of one year. They say if you have a service uh, a guarantee of six months uh, or, or a one year service guarantee, they say we'll also give you a six month or a one year service guarantee. So what is happening now is these people are, are matching up. So in key philosophy kesi hoti hai? they are the me too guys. Maybe who? I also can do it. And their entire uh, focus is external. They are focusing on the competition, they're keeping an eye on the competition, and they are just matching up. What someone else can do, I can also do. So that, that's the entire philosophy of these guys and they're called level players. They level the playing ground. So the entire energy, focus, effort would be, can I qualify? And they're the ones who put all the efforts in qualifying. But these people never ever win the race. When I say never win the race means they don't get the huge profits. They don't get the premium. They're able to float. They're able to survive in some way. So these are level players. Now these level players will have a tough time post corona. Then the second kind of people who are there in the market are the differentiators. They're the ones who don't live by the philosophy of me too. They are the ones who, who don't uh, uh, keep an eye on the competition and, and understand what they're giving and try to match up with them. They keep an eye on the competition to understand what more can I do. So their philosophy is not me too. Their philosophy is what more. So they keep an eye on the competition. Okay, this is what you're doing. We will give a bit more. So their their entire way of working is is to expand the gap between what their competitor is offering and what they're offering. The previous guy, the level playing banda tha, his entire effort was to reduce the gap between the competition and himself. So if competition is here, he will bring himself to this place. The second guy, the differentiator, he says, if the competition is here, I will take my level here. I'll I'll I will I'll take the level up here. And I will increase this gap. But his focus is also external. He's also focusing on the competition. He's also thinking about uh, and, and, and having an eye on the competitor, what they're doing. If they're doing this, we will do more. If they're offering, you know, uh, downtown delivery in, in 48 hours, we will do in 24 hours. If they're saying we will give you a, a service of six months, we will give you one year. So we'll expand the gap between what the competition is offering and what we're offering. This is the differentiator with us. That's the second level of competition or players in the market. The third kind of players in the market are the ones I'm talking about. And this is what this entire video has been all about. So the third level of players are the ones whom we call as the value creating players. They're the ones who don't focus on the competition. They're the ones who focus on the customer. They're the ones who don't ask or who don't have a philosophy of uh, uh, me too. They don't have a philosophy of and some more. They have a philosophy of, can I give my best? They have a philosophy of excellence. So their focus is not competition. Their focus is customers. And they see, can we bridge the gap? Now listen to me carefully. 
they say can we bridge the gap between what is customer's reality and our potential customer ke man mein kya hai aur hamara potential kya hai can we bridge the gap so they are operating all the time from this philosophy of excellence that we are driven by this what the customer wants and this is our potential now can we bridge this gap can we take our potential closer 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 to customer's reality now post corona this is the kind of uh, of sales philosophy we need this is the kind of approach we need level players will not survive that they were they, they they will be matching up with the competition because they are, they will not have time market would have moved ahead uh, the world will not give them a chance because already somebody is supplying more so suppliers are more at that level and these level playing guys are trying to catch up here they will not survive the differentiators will survive now post pre corona the level players would survive now post coronas differentiators will survive and value creators will thrive people companies organizations who think from the customer's perspective and from that perspective they take the potential up and they all the time ask themselves what more what more so they have a lot of questions in the mind the value creating guys are are ones who have a lot of questions so they have questions like what if this could be done this way what if this sales process can be tweaked in this way that the customer benefits they have questions about themselves in the organization that am i a profit center to my company or am i a cost center to my company each person in the company will have to ask this question that am i adding value to my company or am i adding cost to my value you have to ask what are the processes you are using in your company is this process is this procedure is this activity adding cost or is it adding value to my customer now it is not about adding value to yourself it's adding value to the customer so value creating organization is the one who has changed the concept of success till now success was all about what was my top line or what was my bottom line how much money i made how much turnover we did how many clients we acquired what market share are we talking about i'm talking about a different concept of success and the concept of success is that now your success will be measured it was in the past happening but now post corona it's going to increase the speed of this concept will increase that now your success will be measured should be measured by how helpful were you to make your customer successful by what degree your customer became successful because of your products because of your help so that is a measure of your success now. so if you can put yourself into it if you can uh bring in this culture in your organization where everybody right from accounts person right from manufacturing guy the production guy the purchase guy the uh, the operations guy the hr person the the sales person to to hai uska kaam but all of them they come up with this thought process with this philosophy that am i adding value to my customer everybody is asking question whether that person is directly dealing with the customer or not but he is asking the purchase guy is asking this question that i am purchasing goods in certain 1 2 3 4 5 ways are these ways adding value to my customer in the long run or if i change my process my customer will benefit more he has to ask this question your accounts guy your your finance guy who is doing his work from inside he has to ask as a question is process that ye to process mera hai is it adding value in some way is it making the doing business easy for the customer the operations guy has to ask this question the hr guy has to ask this question and that's how the entire philosophy of the company would be one of value creation so the subject is is my favorite i can go on and on because last many years that's what we have been doing in chrysalis we have been focusing consciously putting our efforts into creating value for as many of of our 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 people our our, our students as much as we can and uh, we have we have succeeded to a larger extent and this is such a beautiful subject on on value creation that till we don't create value till we don't have that approach things are not going to be rosy for us in the long run and all those people who are able to create an organization which are value created which are value based which are value not in terms of the, the principles and values value means they are able to create value for the customer they have a value centric approach towards the customer they are the ones who will thrive trust me so i'll be coming next uh, with another video of mine because it's a deep subject and i'll take you deeper into how do we create value what what else we should be do to create value 
if this made sense to you please do write uh, to us please do uh, share your your feedback with us as to what you felt after listening to this video and um, we'll will want to make you more uh, empowered as far as the value creation concept is concerned and uh, wish you all the very best when the market opens so that you can do business with much more vigor with much more zeal but till the time the market opens think on what i've spoken think of what you've heard from my side and see what all you can do in your organization to create value take charge of your life namaste